Tomorrow on the 5 o'clock news, Bill and his crew show us a good bet for the next active cascade volcano. It's an ancient mountain in Oregon few of us have ever heard about called Newberry. It's the threat of the central Oregon. That's tomorrow in part five of the Restless Cascades. The past few months have given most of us a new respect not only for the sometimes terrible powers of nature, but also for the mountains around us we've learned are volcanoes. Yet, while we've learned this last week, what those peaks have done in the past and what they may do again, few, if any of us, are aware of one mountain that could be the most likely next threat. Tonight, in part five of the Restless Cascades, Bill Van Amberg, Carl Wickman, and Dee Dixon show us a hidden volcano, Mount Newberry, the secret threat of central Oregon. Looking south from Bend, it looks like there's a whole separate mountain range about 40 miles east of the Cascades. Locals call that whole area the Polina Mountains. But in reality, those mountains are just one mountain, the remains of a massive lone volcano called Newberry. Known as Newberry Crater today, it's more correctly Newberry Caldera because of its size. This huge hole on a mountain is not quite as big as Crater Lake, but it's more varied, more unpredictable, more active, and much older. The sheer size of the entire mountain is hard to grasp. Not only holding two lakes on the inside, it holds over 200 vents and cones on the outside, giving it the rolling look of smaller hills. But all those hills are part of Newberry and its lava flows, a volcano that engulfed a land. Let's compare that to something we know. We all have an idea of the size of the city of Portland, stretching the city blocks into miles from downtown. Had a volcano the size of Mount St. Helens grown in Portland, its bulk would have dominated this much area almost six miles across at the base. But had Newberry grown here, there would have been no Portland at all. It stretches 20 miles across, once reached 10,000 feet tall, and though not as dramatic, it contains as much rock as the biggest mountains in the range. But what fascinates here is not the size, it's the substance. Newberry is volcanics at its greatest variety. Its interior, a potpourri of pyroclastics and explosive potential. And experts look at it to keep on growing. Newberry Crater would be a, a very likely candidate. The U.S. Geological Survey has done a, a lot of work there in the last three years. They are looking at fill in that old crater and uh, while the age dates haven't arrived yet, it looks like there's a lot of recent volcanism, recent to a geologist, meaning that maybe every thousand years or so. Mm. So it's been about a thousand. It's easy to spot the most recent, most dominant place in this crater, the Big Obsidian Flow, a valley filled with volcanic glass. This jumbled, ridged, blocky flow of lava forced its way out of the earth less than 1,400 years ago and began its unstoppable crush forward. Something about its composition, mainly because it cooled very fast, turned it to smooth glass. It did not form any crystals. Perhaps because it cooled so fast, it stopped before it covered the whole crater, leaving a bulging dome over the vent it squeezed out of and a 100-foot-high wall where it came to rest. Like black asphalt on a summer day, but glistening with a still wet look of molten glass. So new, little life besides man has ventured back. Once a massive flow had finally cooled, Indians moved back into the area. What they found when they got here were a number of remnants. Some of them were familiar with. Gas bubbles filling rocks, pumice, we've seen that up on Mount St. Helens. But what the Indians were most interested in, obviously, was the obsidian itself, this smooth black rock. It's volcanic glass. They found it made excellent arrowheads, and they traded it. It finally was found throughout the Northwest. While not carried out by others, other parts of Newberry have scattered across the northwest. Several cinder cones fill the interior. This one separates the lakes. It, along with the other vents, blew out ash in small eruptions over the last 6,000 years. They've also been responsible for the other lava flows pushing out from their bases. Experts looking at this incredible range of activity wonder if there might not be several sources for the different lavas of this volcano, not just one magma chamber. Yet why the peak fell in in the first place is still unclear. <laughs> One thing you can count on being clear is the water, though. Fishermen have called this lake home for years, taking off from the tiny marina to go after kokanee planted in the lake, others preferring to trap the local lobster. Crayfish are plentiful. Newberry is sort of a secret family tradition. Many people have been coming here every year since Grandpa first handed the McCain pool. What's nice, it stayed about the same. The Turners have been making the lake a vacation for quite a while. They came this year, even though their new dog, Molly, gets skittish and seems to be able to predict when another volcano, Mount St. Helens, will go next. She tries to get under anything low, the telephone table, the bed, huh. anything. 
Well, tell me, even though your dog seems to be able to tell the mountain, you still come to a caldera for a little time off for vacation. Why? Don't you feel a little... No, she'll let us know. <laughs> she'll let us know. <laughs> no, I, I think the... Uh, if, if this thing blows, it's old, and if it blows, I think we'll know it. Uh, you know, we'll get rumbles and so on. Notice that if it did start to rumble, I wouldn't want to be here. The most fascinating part of this comfortable caldera is its age, though, and the clear, touchable volcanics laid out before us, even Polina Peak. These soaring rocks came from some of the last lava flows to pour down the peak before its collapse. Polina Lake is a paradise scene created out of massive destruction in the not-so-distant past, surrounded on all sides by the jumbled, blocky crags of the former caldera rim. Just one example of the awesome forces that were at work here. Like its brother peaks to the west, Newberry Crater is not extinct, it's only dormant. And just like them, this unique volcano remains very capable of starting up again to make its own changes in a land that's constantly changing. From Newberry Crater, I'm Bill Van Amberg for Channel 2 News. On the news at 5 next Monday, Bill and crew bring us part 6 of the Restless Cascades, giving us a new way of looking at the Oregon volcano land, sleeping mountains where the earth is thin. That's Monday on the news here at 5.